Hello and welcome once again to the Rugged Rockhound. Oh, it's been a while. It's been, I don't know, a month, over a month since I was last out rockhounding. With all the heat, it made it hard to rockhound after work or close here because it's just, it's hot valley here. So it was either I had to go far to find a place that was higher elevation or I'd have to go out early on a weekend. Unfortunately, most of those were taken up by family reunions, <laughs> um, business trips, a bunch of things. Just made it very difficult. So I'm excited to finally get back out. It's a good 10 degrees cooler now. We're in the low 90s rather than the hundreds. We were in the hundreds for three weeks straight before the last family reunion I just did this last weekend. I was planning to go out rock hounding during the family reunion with the family, but we had a bunch of crazy stuff happen through every plan we had into the, just kind of threw it off to the side and we had to make new plans. Anyway, rock hounding was one of the ones that got scrapped just because it wasn't going to work. Oh well, maybe next time. Anyway, so here I am in Grand Junction. So there's the city down there. Maybe some of you remember those hills right there. That is where the guy, oh gosh, I forgot his name already, where his claim is where he was digging out the barrettes. Where I usually go for look for barrettes are over those hills and a fair distance that way. And I decided to come up here to the foot of the book cliffs because I just want to look for new things see what I can find this really isn't known for anything up here it's the Mancos shell so in the Mancos you tend to get fossils if you get much of anything yeah the ba ba the uh, barite nodules that's an unusual thing but usually you will get some kind of fossils and then up here I've heard that you can get some nice kind of squid fossils so when I say squid I'm referring to things called cephalopods that's kind of the catch-all term for all of them but there's different types. There's ones that are coiled, which people call ammonites. And then there's the long, skinny, straight ones, which people will call bacolites or belemnites. Or there's, there's a different number of terms based on how accurate you can describe that species. Anyway, we'll just say bacolite. That's kind of a more catch-all term. So we're going to look for some bacolites up here in there. And like I said, it's, it's kind of a squid fossil. It's a shell. So if you think of a seashell, they're usually coiled. And then you can think of an ammonite. It's coiled, but it's all kind of flat. Imagine that ammonite uncoiled and a long, a long straight cone. That is, that's what a backlight is. So we're going to see if we can find any. And you may hear guns going off every now and then. The, the shooting range is just over there, over on the other side of that mountain, basically. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Oh, and just to update, so you know how I had that kind of drama happening with the, uh, with the guy that has the claim now on the, on the, the Limonite pseudomorphs? Finally met up with him, we got to talk, and we're good friends now. <laughs> yeah, I knew as soon as he realized that I wasn't the person that they were claiming me to be, that I was just a, you know, a nice person that made an honest mistake, that also was unfortunate because somebody had removed their signs. Anyway, so we're friends now. We may go rock hounding, rock hounding together sometime. I don't know. Depends on when I get back into Utah when it's cooler. <laughs> anyway, let's get up here and see if we can't find anything. And if I do find something here, here's the GPS coordinates to get here. I really hope there's something here. So I'm just parked up on top of that hill down here in the wash. Always good to start in the wash to get a feel for what you've got. So some things I've seen so far, lots of sandstone, some shales, and we've got occasionally inside the sandstone some little iron concretions. Uh, the, uh, the shale occasionally looks like it has something that might be a fossil. Nothing like really definitive yet. But yeah, that's what I'm seeing so far. Just typical sedimentary units that I kind of expected. Uh, good. Looks like we got a trace fossil in the sandstone. Probably a burrow. An organism burrowing into the sand. That would have been in the ocean. Or a lake. So my plan is I'm going to go up this fork of the river and up that way because that looks like it has more stuff coming off the cliff. So if I can kind of explore that area I might get some more variety. Here we have a little bit of shell. You can see some fossils in it and some trace fossils. 
So they're not very good. They're not well formed. They weren't well preserved. So there's not a whole lot of texture there, but you can see there were a few little fossils, some seashells and stuff. So there you go. We got fossils, but I need better looking ones than that if I want to keep anything. <laughs> but that's okay. It means we're hopefully heading in the right direction. Now, what is going on here? That is very interesting. Okay. So it's, it's, you know, it's mud and silt. So you can see that red is occurring in these like little layers. So these little layers, they, they probably represent some kind of organic material, whether it's some kind of plant material, piece of wood that's flattened. I don't know for sure, but it's really cool that it's red. So high in iron, like did iron come in and replace? Hmm. Very interesting. Might have to look that, that at that more closely. Try and figure out what it is, exactly what's going on. I'm not very familiar with this, but I really think it's probably biology related. <laughs> Here's something else interesting. Look at that. So it's a little thin layer of calcite, which can either be a layer of calcite that deposited between two layers of rock, or it could be what used to be a shell because shells are made out of calcium, ca calcium carbonate. Man, don't have my words today. So that right there, because of the pattern on it, could possibly be the edge of a shell, but it could also be just the way the rock fractured, and that's just what it is. Hmm. Difficult to tell on that one. I see the something shiny. Haha, <laughs> look at that. Gypsum on the surface. So common to find out here in the desert. We see it a lot. <laughs> we get that all the time. Little bits of gypsum like that are just everywhere. This rock looks like it might be volcanic. Unusual. I wasn't expecting volcanic rock. This is mostly sandstone and shells here. Maybe further up on the cliff up there, there's a volcanic unit somewhere. Well, 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 what do we have here? Look at those impressions in there. Definitely the trace fossil of something that used to be there. Well, impression. Impression of something. Probably some kind of plant. Looks like a tropical, like the stalk of a tropical plant of some kind. Cool. And on top of that, I think I saw something next to it. Something that still has maybe something in it. Hmm. Not good definition. Not sure what that is. Could just be a trace fossil. Well, this is kind of neat. You'll notice there's a certain texture or pattern to the surface of this piece of sandstone. This is a very classic example of what it looks like when you see the trace fossil of what would have been the bottom of a riverbed. It's where things will hit the bottom of the riverbed and bounce off and skip around and it creates these really cool tracks kind of going like this. Some nice deep ones, some just little thin ones. Yeah, this is a great example though of what a trace fossil looks like that used to be the bottom of a river. Okay, what do we got going on here? Hmm, that uh, looks like a high concentration of iron. Almost a, maybe a hematite. That's pretty cool. A lot of iron in that spot of the sandstone. Here's a nice red rock with some fossil impressions. You can see a nice seashell impression right there. All right, so I want to find some belemnites, but, or bacolites, however you want to call them, but it, any chance of really finding a good one's going to be trying to find the actual source, finding out where they're coming out of the hill, because after they've been moved any small amount, they usually fall apart. So I don't think I'm going to find much down here in the, the stream bed. Best chances is to get up on the hills. Got a few little fossils in this one. Looks like either a crinoid or a coral stem. Got another one there. Yeah, that could be a crinoid, but it could be just a stem of a coral. Looks cool though. That looks interesting. We 
Look at that. It looks kind of a little bit like a septarian. Like a squashed one. A little bit of calcite in there. Yeah, why don't we break it open and see if there's anything in it? Okay. Very thin veins going through it. Might even be barite, actually. It's hard to tell when it's that small. Uh, what do we see on the other side? Yeah, it's probably calcite. Just kind of a brown. Now that is really cool. It's a really nice impression of one of those fossils. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be some kind of plant. It's almost like a corn cob or something. That is so cool. And this has a lot of iron on it, this one. A little bit right up there, too. Yeah, that is just neat. It's the best one I've seen so far like that. What's that? Looks like something right there. Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. Those are burrows. This looks like burrows. Still really cool. Well, look at that. That looks like some volcanic units up there at the top. But you don't see them over here, huh? Interesting. Must be just a small area. Well, that confirms I thought that one rock down there was volcanic. That's where it came from. Unfortunately, I may have to head out in like 15, 20 minutes. Depends on how heavy that rainfall is that's coming. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is get stuck out here when it rains. If it rains heavy, that clay is a nightmare. It gets really slick. <laughs> so... If that looks like it's threatening heavy rain, I'm definitely, definitely gonna head back. But I don't want to. I feel like I'm just now getting to the spot where things are getting really interesting. That's a cool little iron concretion I just found. It's got this little pocket in it. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah. At least you can get some iron concretions out here. wonder if you can get anything that's close to a Moki marble or anything. Okay, unfortunately I gotta head back. The wind just picked up. I'm down here hiding in the gully from the wind. You can smell the rain, you can feel it. It's a pretty heavy storm and you can see how dark it's getting up there. So I need to get out of here before I get stuck out here. So I'm gonna start heading back. Hopefully I'll get back in time that I don't have to deal with any really wet slick roads. But anyway, yeah, I'll keep looking for stuff on the way down though. Maybe we'll find something cool on the way out. <laughs> yeah, I'm just really sad that things were just starting to get really interesting. I was really getting excited for this spot right here. <sighs> oh well, I will go ahead and just kind of put a pin on this place. I'll come back here at some other time. I'm pretty sure there's some really cool stuff to find up here. That that one fossil there that looked like the corn on a cob, that, that was really cool. There's gotta be more of that out here. So, yeah, I'm going to start heading back, see what else we can find on our way out. Well, there's another septarian sitting on the side. This one's all broken up. Yeah, they don't really see it, seem to have any crystal pockets in it. But who knows, maybe there is one somewhere that actually has a crystal pocket on it. There seems to be quite a few of them. Look at that thing. That's really cool too. That's got a lot of iron in that sandstone. And that could have been a stick at one point. Not entirely sure, but that's what it looks like. Still really, really cool. Now that is the edge of a large septarian. You can see calcite all through it. Doesn't look like it has any crystal pockets though. At least not any well defined. And there it is again. Ah. Huh. Uh, I just wish it wasn't so big. I'm gonna leave it. As cool as that is and as much as I want to keep that, that rock's just too big for me. I'll have to come back out sometime and maybe find a smaller one. I must admit, there's some great landscaping rocks out here. <laughs> 
Well, I'm gonna decide to turn back. That's heading straight for me. That is a downpour of rain. You can feel that wind. Hear that wind. Yeah, that storm's coming. <laughs> Glad I decided to turn back. Anyway, that's a neat spot up there. I definitely want to go explore some more up there. I think there's some pretty cool stuff. I'll have to come back out again. Well, I hope you enjoyed, even though it was kind of short. The weather cut it short. <laughs> and I'm just now getting back up to my vehicle. So, until next time, remember, there is treasure everywhere.